Hello friends and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. In this video, we are going to learn about command usage in Linux. First of all, commands in Linux are case sensitive, which means a capital LS will not give the same result as a lower case LS. In fact, most of the standard utility commands are in lower case. Let us execute lower case and upper case ls and see the result. So let me open the terminal. A lower case ls gives us the listing of all the files and directories. And now let me type upper case ls. As you can see it gives us a different result. Now let us see where these commands are located in the system. There is a predetermined list of commands which the system first searches before it flashes a result or a message. These commands are essentially files containing some programs mainly written in C language. These files are stored in certain directories. The best and the fastest way to know the location of the program that the system will execute is to use the type command. So let us see where the ls command is located in the system. So I type type ls and hit enter. As you can see it shows the result that ls is hashed at slash bin slash ls which means that the ls program is located in the slash bin directory. So when you execute the ls command, the system fetches this file from the slash bin directory and executes it. In case you are getting something else as the output, you need to type unalias ls to reset ls to default. Now let us understand about internal and external commands. The Linux system is command based, that is, things happen because of the commands that you type. They are grouped into two main categories. First is the internal commands. The commands which are built into the shell are known as the internal commands. For all the shell built in commands, execution of the same is fast, in the sense that the shell doesn't have to search the given path for them for executing it. External commands are those which aren't built into the shell. When an external command has to be executed, the shell looks for its path and it gets executed. They are usually located in the slash bin or slash user slash bin directories. To know whether a command is an internal or an external command, we can again use the type command. Let us say we type type cd and it shows as a result that cd is a shell built in. So cd is an internal command. In contrast, if we type type ls, it will give us the location of ls which is slash bin slash ls. So ls is an external command. The first word of a command is actually the command and the additional words are called arguments. Commands and arguments have to be separated by spaces or tabs to enable the system to interpret them as words. We can use any number of spaces. So if I type type and a number of spaces and then ls, it will give us the same result as type space ls. Also note that you have to type at least one space to distinguish between the command and the argument. So if I type type ls, it will give us an output that command is not found. Next comes the options in commands. Options basically provide results of a command in a modified way. For example, if you type ls space minus l, it will give you a detailed listing of the files. These options are predefined as well and if you use a wrong option with a command, it will give you an error. So 
Let us see what we get if we type ls space minus l. As you can see, we can get a detailed output as compared to just ls which just showed the name of the files. Here, the permissions, date modified and the name and other details as well are listed. If you use an illegal option, let's say ls space minus z. So, it gives you an error that it is an invalid option. You can combine multiple options with a single command and the options can be combined with one minus sign. So ls space minus l space minus a space minus t is the same as ls space minus lat. abc is the file name. This facility reduces our typing load. We can also combine multiple commands in the command line. All we have to do is use a semicolon between the two commands. For example, if we type ls semicolon pwd, the output will first give result of ls followed by pwd. As you can see, first it has listed the files followed by our working directory. If our command doesn't fit in a single line, it will simply overflow to the next line and sometimes if we need to split the command into multiple lines, the shell issues a secondary prompt usually denoted by a greater than symbol. The greater than symbol will generally appear due to the absence of a matching quote or parenthesis. Example is an echo command which is used to print. Let us see that in action. So if I type echo space geeks and hit enter. The shell issues a secondary prompt and I can resume typing so I type geeks again. Now I close the braces and hit enter so I get the output geeks geeks in two different lines. In contrast if I type echo space geeks geeks and hit enter geeks geeks will be displayed in a single line. Note that this will only work if you code the string which you are printing. Otherwise when you hit enter the output will directly be displayed. So that's all for this video. For any doubts or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.